Wilson set to work with much success. He convinced the Senate to pass the Underwood Simmons Tariff, which for the first time since the Civil War reduced tariff rates. Next, he pursued financial reform by establishing a private banking system under federal control to make credit more available throughout the country and quickly adjust the amount of money in circulation. The Federal Reserve System was one of Wilson's greatest achievements and is the cornerstone of our economy even today. The next year, Wilson helped establish the Federal Trade Commission and signed into law the Clayton Antitrust Act. Both the commission and the act were aimed at stopping unfair business practices. Despite his admirable record of accomplishments and his support of suffrage for women, Wilson, like Roosevelt and Taft, did little to improve African-Americans' civil rights. Perhaps it was his Southern upbringing that influenced his decision to appoint segregationists as the heads of federal agencies. Segregation expanded in the military, and the practice returned to the Capitol and federal offices in Washington, D.C., that had been desegregated during Reconstruction. I have made no promises in particular to Negroes, except to do them justice. Ida Wells Barnett had joined W.E.B. Du Bois, Mary Church Terrell, Jane Addams, and others in founding the NAACP, the National Association for the Advancement of Colored People. In 1910, the NAACP had supported Wilson's bid for the presidency. Now the African Americans and their white supporters felt Wilson had betrayed their trust. As editor of the Memphis Free Speech, Ida Wells Barnett had led a campaign to protest the lynching of African Americans in the United States. Despite the fact that between 1892 and 1903, some 3,000 African Americans were killed, Wilson failed to support federal anti-lynching legislation or reverse the practice of segregation in his government. William Monroe Trotter, editor of the Boston-based newspaper The Guardian, asked him, Have you a new freedom for white Americans and a new slavery for your Afro-American fellow citizens? God forbid. There were limits to the success and scope of progressivism as evidenced by Wilson's inaction on civil rights. Still, the progressive era did reflect the basic optimism of the American public, a belief that any problem could be solved. Despite Wilson's rhetoric, class struggles were emerging, unemployment was growing in America, and by 1914, the first world war had broken out in Europe. Woodrow Wilson was re-elected in 1916, and although his campaign slogan was, he kept us out of war, America inevitably became involved. The attention of the nation now turned from the reforms and inequalities of the progressive era to the reality and horror of war.